Welcome to the fourth lecture of the series. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to further the ideas and basic concepts of semi-rings. Uh, previously, hopefully I've given you a, a good intuition of uh, what a semi-ring might be. So now let's move on to the more formal definition. So a semi-ring, uh, mathematically is written as a five tuple of uh, a set K, O plus times O bar and one bar. So each of, uh, each of them mean a certain thing. Um, for K, it's a set containing some mathematical object um, or, or, or more explicitly, it's, it's a set containing all the weights of your automaton, right? Uh, for O plus, is the additional operation. O times is the multiplication operation. Uh, o, uh, zero bar is the additive identity, and one bar is the multiplicative identity. Now, the, these four uh, notation uh, is written as such so to not confuse with classical addition, classical multiplication, uh, the real number zero, and uh, the real number one, right? Uh, in, actual, in actuality, it could be anything. So, just a reminder, um, the addition operation, O plus, uh, must follow these three properties, right? Uh, associativity, commutativity, uh, as well as uh, the presence of a additive identity. Um, for, as for O times, right, it needs to have a, uh, it needs to have a multiplicative identity, as well as uh, it needs to be associative as well, right? And the last few things you need to check whether or not you have a semi-ring is the distributivity, um, whether whether or not um, there's the left distributed left distributivity, sorry, and uh, right distributivity of uh, your 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 multiplication operation. So, again, just to emphasize, why do we really need to study semi rings? Well, in most areas of life, uh, understanding how a field would work would be would, would would be more than enough, right? But if you want to know um, work with uh, transducers uh, or fi finite automatons, um, one requires a knowledge of uh, semi-rings. So uh, that's why this is uh, one of the very important reason to study semi-rings. Now, um, another reason is something known as a generic problem solving, as mentioned earlier. Now, um, it's quite hard to explain what generic problem solving is. So I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm going to try my, try, try my best to, uh, to bring this point across to you using a few examples, right? Um, hopefully you can spot the pattern and understand what I'm trying to do, right? I'm going to, I'm going to give you three examples. The first of which is suppose you're given a, um, a directed graph, right? A directed graph and you're tasked to find the shortest path from S to T. Well, the first thing you do is to identify all the possible paths from S to T, right? In this, in this particular case, right, there's uh, three paths, S, A, T, S, B, D, T, S, B, C, D, T, right, the three paths, and what do you do? Well, suppose um, these numbers here, these weights represent, um, say, the distance between S and A, right? So taking path A, pa the first path, right, S, A, T, right, it will take about 13 units of distance, right? Uh, if I take S, B, D, T, it will take 12 units of distance, and then uh, finally it will take, uh, if I were to take S, B, C, D, T, right, the total distance would be 11 now. But I need to find the shortest path. So what do I do, what do, I, what I do next? Uh, well, the most natural approach is to compare the paths and you take the shortest path. And, and uh, formally, it's to take the minimum function across the three uh, uh, distances. And of course, it returns 11. Uh, 11 being the uh, distance between S and T through the path S, B, C, D, and T. So this is the first example uh, of a uh, finding the shortest path between S and T. Now suppose I give you another example. All right? Consider consider now this uh, this directed graph representing say connected components within a circuit. And uh, the weights now represent say probability of uh, two connected components not failing. Now suppose if I were to to uh, say you know transfer something from S to A, right? The the probability of this this particular transition not failing is a uh, 40% or uh, 0.4, right? So again, I want to find the maximum reliability from S to T. So what do I do? Well, I, I identify all possible paths, right? Which is SAT, SBDT, SBCDT. And then, but using laws from a uh, classical probability, uh, what do I do? Is that I multiply them because uh, the, uh, you, you have to pass through them one after another. So you need to multiply the probabilities probabilities together. Um, so for, for if I would take the first path, 
right? It'll be 0.4 times 0.8, and it gives me a 32% chance of actually not failing, right? And if we take the second path, SBDT, uh, you I'll have about 12.6% of uh, not failing, which is a uh, which is not very good. And then finally, if I were to take the third path, SBCDT, I'll have a 56.7% chance of actually not failing, right? So, but I want to find the maximum reliability. So what do I do? Again, I consider the, the outcomes from taking the individual paths, and I take the maximum this time round, right? Uh, the, the maximum probability, which, which is actually 56.7%, right? And that, that would be the third path, S, B, C, D, T. If I were to take this path, right, this would give me the highest reliability, the highest probability of uh, not, uh, not failing uh, uh, between the components S and T, right? Hopefully you can see a pattern here. Hopefully, hopefully you can see a, 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 a an abstraction of a of a general pack pattern over here, right? If you can't, well, let's move on to the final example. Um, now suppose now I want to find all possible languages leading from S to T given a automaton, right? Now, uh, so what do I do? Well, again, you just identify the possible path, right? There's three possible paths, right? And then you instead of uh, multiplying, multiplying, adding. What we do is that we, we, we concatenate the letters together. So if I will take this path, right, take this path, I'll have to concatenate A and T, which will give me AT, which is at the word at. And if I take the second path, S B D T, I would I, I will have to concatenate T, H and E, which gives me the. And then finally the final path will give, will give me time, right? T I M E. Right? After concatenating T I M E, I get time. Right? But I want to find all possible languages leading from S to T. So what do I do? The second step is just to take the union between, I, I, I consider the three paths and I take the union. And then I create a, a set of three objects at the and time. Right? This would, this would give me the language, all the possible languages starting from S to T. Now, these problems are very, very different. Shortest distance, possible languages, you know, maximum reliability. But you, you realize at the core, at the core, they are actually very much the same problem, right? Suppose if I were to rewrite all the operations given, right? So, so the, for the first one, we'll be taking the minimum throughout the three paths. Uh, the second one, we'll be taking the maximum uh, across all the possible probabilities. And the third one is to take the union among all, all the possible uh, paths, uh, concatenated letters of the paths, right? So this, is there even more general way of looking at expressions? Because they, it feels like, that, like, there is some sort of similarities between these three problems, algebraically speaking, right? So how, what's the more general way? Well, it turns out that there is, right? So you can actually replace all the inner operations with the O times and the outer operations with O plus. And then what you have is that you, you, you took the path one, right? Path one, it has, it has weight one and weight two. You multiply both the paths together. Right, take the second path, multiply their, their weights together, and then take the third third path and multiply their weights together. Now the weights could stand for different things, right? Under different contexts, different questions, different problems. So, and then what do you do? Well, you add them together. You just add the three weights of the three different paths together, right? So more compactly, more compactly, we write the, them as this. This uh, is that where pi is a path belonging to the set. S to T, where, where it means that all paths starting from S ending in T. So in this particular case, there's three possible paths, right? And so you add all the weights of all the possible paths together. So this is the compact version of what is written here, right? And this notation, right? Hopefully you understand, you understood what is generic problem solving and understood what this notation actually mean, right? Because you'll, you, you'll see this notation well, for many, many lectures to come. So I hope you have understood, right, the formal definition of semi-ring, the five tuple, uh, the another additional motivation of uh, studies, studying semi-rings, as well the key idea of generic problem solving and all the notation within, right? Uh, and if you want to learn more, you can visit these two books, uh, Speech Recognition Algorithms Using Weighted Finite State Transducers by uh, Takaki Hori, uh, as well as uh, Speech Recognition with Weighted Finite State Transducer by Mori. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this lecture and hope to see you again.